All right. Hey, welcome church. We are so excited that you are joining us online. If you are part of the Well Body, we are excited you're here with us. Uh, maybe you're a friend or a family member of someone and they've asked you to join us online. Or maybe you're just scrolling through social media and you have landed here with us. We are so excited um, that you are worshiping with us in this online platform. Uh, just to be clear, uh, this is actually Tuesday afternoon and we are recording live. We just received uh, the word along with the rest of you that um, we are receiving a stay-at-home order here in Greene County for the next 30 days. And so we um, hustled this afternoon and um, got some people together to come and to record this week's message for you. And we are so excited that you are joining us here now on Sunday morning to be part of this message. And so we have asked our worship team to share with us this morning, and we're just going to start out. Uh, with a time of worship and we recognize right now that you are sitting in your living room uh, some of you may still be curled up in your bed in your PJs and uh, that's awesome but we also want to take a moment and just encourage you with your family or or their whoever you're with to take to take a posture of worship and if for you, if that's gathering your family in a circle and all standing, if that's you seated there, um, you'll notice we're seated. Our worship team is going to be seated here today because that, that's to help you see that you can worship the Lord seated. You can worship the Lord standing. Uh, you can worship the Lord laid out on your floor, however you're comfortable this morning. But just to remember, this isn't a show you're watching. Um, this is a, a worship service that we want you to be part of. We want you to be a participant in worship today. And so thanks again for being here with us. And I'm just going to lead us into a short prayer as we prepare for worship this morning. Father, we love you and we praise you. And Father, we trust you in all things. And so we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will move this morning. God, we recognize that you are not limited by time or space or, or anything. God, you have full reign of everything that's taking place. And so, Father, we pray that the, this morning all across our world and our country and our community, Father, you will be worshipped. God, you will be lifted high. Father, that your name would be glorified and made known. Father, we worship you in this place this morning. We love you. Amen. Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness. You have filled me with peace.
promises are yes and amen. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. Yes, you are, Lord. And all your promises are yes.
darkness keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here you're touching every heart i worship you i worship you you are here you're healing every life i worship you stop working even when I don't see it you're working when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working come on sing this from your home even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working Sorrow 
you, you love us just as we are, God. I just pray that you would speak through us this morning, God, that it won't be our words, but it will be yours. In Jesus' name, amen. God is good. And um, we have been in this, uh, we've been in this series where we've been talking about what it is to be a neighbor, what it means to love your neighbor, and what, it, what a neighbor looks like. And um, if you guys have missed the last few weeks, you can catch up. This is the third week of our series. You can catch up on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, you can go there and check us out at the well, and you guys can catch up in the last two weeks if you need to. Um, but this will be the third week, the final week of this series of Neighbors. And um, our series scriptures through this has been this. It's been Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 31, and it says this. Jesus replied, The most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord your God is the one and only Lord. Mm, don't you love that? And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is, is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Our, our series focus this entire time has been this. The scripture clearly gives us two distinct commands here. It's to love God and to love others. Amen. You know, when Jesus, he came in here and he, he just revolutionized it when he came to earth and he said this. He said, the law can just be summed up in these two things. To love God and love others. To love God and love others. And that, and that first week we talked about what it meant to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and all our strength. And uh, we found out that it, honestly, it, it, starts, it starts with the heart. That's where it starts at. Our faith in Jesus is what transforms our heart and fills us with his spirit. And his spirit floods our life with this love, with his love, with this, um, my brother was talking about this agape love, this, this self-sacrificing love that allows you to go outside of yourself and love others. It's that type of love that we need in our life. And the only way we can get that is by putting our faith in Jesus and letting him transform our hearts and that was in week one we were talking about that's where it starts to love the Lord your God with all your heart and then what follows is your soul and your mind and your strength and the connection that runs in and intertwines all of them together but it starts with the heart it starts with that faith in Jesus now last week we looked at um we looked at the way we should view ourselves, which is very interesting how how Jesus talks about in that commandment to to love your neighbor as you love yourself um, and it's, uh, it's about getting that biblical perspective of the way to view ourselves. And if we can get that right, if we can get that right spiritual view of ourselves, what it does is it, it impacts the way that we love and the way that we treat others. It comes from the overflow of the way that we love God and the way he transforms our heart. Um, we came to understanding that this, these three things we came to this understanding of is that we're all broken. We're all broken. We're all on this level playing field. We're all broken. We also found out that we all need a Savior. And what the best news was, we found out that the gospel tells us about this Savior, about this Jesus who wants to come in and transform our lives. And then we found out that we're all set apart for something. We're all set apart for something. So we're all broken. We all need a Savior. And we have a Savior, and we're all set apart for something. And the most beautiful thing is this, is this through our brokenness, the Savior uses us to love others in the same way he loved us through his brokenness on the cross. And this week, in our, in our, in our final week, our focus is going to be this, guys, is we're going we're gonna to hear some real stories. We've we got a treat for you guys today. You're going to hear some real stories about the impact of being a neighbor. The title of our... Um, of our sermon today is love others. Love others. Could it come at a better time in our life right now that we're talking about what it means to love others in a situation where some of us feel isolated and, and, and we're like, how, what do I do? How do I love others? Well, stick around. We're going to walk through it with you. <coughs> our scripture is from John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. It says this, so now I'm giving you a new commandment to love each other. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Here's the deal, guys. We are in a, a, an unusually unique time in our country, in our world. And this passage of Scripture 
also comes at a very unusually unique time in Jesus' life. Right before this scripture, Jesus, um, he washes his disciples' feet. Right after this passage of scripture, Jesus is crucified. A time of unparalleled crisis where Jesus chose to humble himself. He chose to love and he chose to give all. In between washing his disciples' feet and dying on that cross, Jesus gave this commandment. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. We're going to dive into that today. That's good. So uh, we're actually here today with some of our neighbors, and I'm excited to talk to you and kind of hear some of their stories about the impact that a neighbor had on their life. And so that's what we want to kind of focus on in this section is the impact of a neighbor, that, that a neighbor can have upon our life. And, and kind of defining neighbor, uh, a neighbor is anyone that you may cross paths with and you have the ability to show kindness and grace and mercy to or to not show that to. In, in scripture, um, we hear about the, the neighbor referred to in the Good Samaritan when, we're at, when they're at, Jesus is asked to define who our neighbor is. And, and there were many people that passed by this person on the road who needed help, but Jesus defined the neighbor as the one who actually crossed paths with that person and stopped and gave them help. And so this morning, I've asked some individuals to come and to share with us um, and the first question I've asked them to share is, what impact um, did a neighbor have upon your life? And I've chosen these people because I know their story, and I know how they've been impacted uh, by a neighbor. So I'm going to start on this side. Um, tell me your name and how long the two of you have been neighbors. My name is John Freeman, and we, five years probably. Five years. Okay, so Cody, let me know. How did you guys become neighbors? How did you cross paths? What's your name? My name's Cody <laughs> Modersherd, and we uh, golf together. That's kind of how we know each other. And, and so, so because I know, because this happens to my, my husband, your paths crossed a lot on the golf course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, very good. So that's how you guys know one another. Okay, ladies, um, let me, how long you guys have known each other and how you became neighbors? Um, we've probably known each other, what, about six years now? Eight years? Oh, eight years now. Uh, we worked together before, um, and so that's how we met. Okay, all right. So, so I'll let you guys go again next. The next question is, how did um, being neighbors with one another through your work, um, how did that impact your decision to come to church? Who wants to speak into that? Um. Well, I worked with LaDonna, and there was another lady that does go to the well here um, that worked with us. <clears throat> and I would hear them in conversation um, every day throughout the week talking about their church and the love and the excitement that they had for it. And I just, I listened to them, and I thought, gosh, I just want to be a part of that. I ended up, I would watch her at work. She loved everybody. She never talked bad about anybody. She was consistent all the time. And I kept looking at her thinking, that's, that's what I want. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what I want. So, so literally the way, uh, there was a, there's a third person actually in this friendship, in this neighbor friendship, and that be, the way that she loved people, the love that she had for people made you want what she had. So good. Okay, so for you guys, uh, what was it, Cody, that, that drew you in um, to wanting to know more about church or what was going on? Well, my wife and I were looking for a church, and we'd been going to different churches just looking for the one that fit us good. And, and uh, we were kind of, or I was kind of hoping that John would kind of invite us to go to church. <laughs> right. And uh, thinking, why aren't you? inviting us to go to church with you <laughs> and uh so you know finally he did he said hey you ought to go to church sometime yeah like john does and so we tried it and it, it the well is set aside from the other churches we went to and ways that we liked yeah. and uh 
So, you know, Cody, that is such a great point that I, I hope you guys hear. Um, a lot of times our neighbors are, are literally waiting for us to reach out to them to say, hey, you know, check this service out online or come with me to church today. And in fact, statistics are pretty high that, that, that most people will say yes to a personal invitation from a neighbor. And so, you know, we, we, sometimes we think, oh, how can I love my neighbor? And we, we get all these complex plans of how we can do that. Man, sometimes it's just inviting them uh, to church or to pray with you or, or to be a part of what's going on um, in your context. And so that's really good. So the next thing I want, to, I want you guys to kind of let me know, um, what was it about this neighbor relationship that um, kind of drew you in and wanted, you, you know, you said, I wanted what she had or I wanted to know what that looked like. What what about um, the, the relationship of a neighbor kind of drew you into coming and being part of church? Um, for me, I have four kids at home, and we were in a season where we were trying to find somewhere as well. And LaDonna, she would talk about her daughter um, being in the youth group and how excited she was. And I actually remember when she got baptized. And it was such a, a cool moment um, to watch her go through that and just the excitement. And I thought, you know, I... I really want that for our kids. I want our kids to have a family and to have a home. And when we came here, we, we, we watched them. We watched, you know, how they just loved it and how they got up and they were so excited to go. So that drew, you know, as a mama, that drew me in. Okay. So, Cody, what would you say? What, you know, what, what really kind of drew you in um, being friends and in this neighbor friendship, you know? Yeah. I guess just getting getting to know John and, you know, started out, we were just having fun together, playing golf, and then you just get to talking about different things and, and uh, you know, you get to, you know, admire people for the type of life they live and and um, I have seen that, you know, they, him and Selena have done a lot for other people and, and uh, that's just something that I noticed and the good fruit in their life that, you know, the Bible says good fruit trees produce good fruit, and that is noticed with them, and uh, so that's kind of why yeah. I guess he led us, or, you know, we let him lead us because of that. Right, right, because it, so. it goes back to how people love others, like right. you're being drawn into to watching how people treat other people, and, and you want to be a part of that, and you want to be a part of what God's doing through that. So, um, so Cody, kind of in the, along those same lines, you know, I've got to watch you now be a neighbor to several people. You and Tiff have invited several people and brought people with you. So being invited in and, and somebody being a good neighbor to you, how has that kind of impacted you being a good neighbor to others? Well, we, I guess we don't think that we should just go around and just ask everybody to go to church, but there have been people come into our life that we have felt like we're supposed to invite to church, yeah. and they usually do come to church. Yeah, that's good. So, John, you have anything you want to share? It has, in my life, it has always been that the, that the, the Lord ties you to people in life through playing golf or playing ball or, or singing, whatever you might like to do. There's no, it's no accident that you like to do the same things. And he ties us together with people in life through those things. Yeah. And ultimately, if, if you believe like we believe, that he's always trying to bring us back to him, bring us in the center of his will. So That's so good. He, the, this idea that you know, we define a neighbor as who you cross paths with, that that's not by chance, that's not, you know, that, that's intentional. The Lord has an intentional plan of bringing all people um, into relationship with himself. And so understanding that when the people that we cross paths with on a regular basis that would be considered our neighbors, the Lord wants to use us in their lives, and then he wants to use them in the lives of others. And so it's important, it's important to understand that. So um, what would you, how would you guys kind of define that? The, the idea of, you know, you were, you both, you both were led to church through neighbors. And now here you are, very involved in our church, leaders in our church, both of you. How has that impacted the responsibility you feel to be a good neighbor and invite people in um, to the body? We probably don't invite like we should. 
we should probably invite more. But we go downtown, and the one thing that I have learned through all of this is you love everybody. Amen. You love every person that walks. Um, society is a judgmental society, yeah. and we can't do that. Okay. You've got to love everybody. And that's, that has opened up my eyes, you know, yeah. to love everybody. Because we are a church for... All people. All people. <laughs> All people. So good. Kim? Um, I, I just think it kind of goes back to my last answer is that I just want other families to be able to experience what our family has been able to experience mm -hmm. and my kids to be fed and to have the relationships that they have. So I good. think that's so important. That's so good. And so I hope you hear from the, us this morning too. You know, obviously uh, we're part of the Well Church and we love this body, but, but whether God would lead you to the Well Church or to another body, He's trying to lead you into a body. He, he's trying to lead you into relationship with him, into community with him. And so to love your neighbors, those who you come in contact with and cross paths with, uh, whether you're part of this body or another body, that, man, you're sharing the love of Christ with them. And so I've asked uh, Brandon to share with us just a little bit, kind of in, in, in closing this morning and kind of in con conclusion. So we've talked about um, the impact of neighbors. And... Uh, Brandon's going to talk about your impact, your specific impact this morning um, in, this, in this incredibly interesting and different time, the impact that you can have on your neighbors. That's so good. Uh, just hearing that and really reflecting on my own life. Uh, you know, one thing we hear is, um, you know, throughout the, 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 all of those stories and those testimonies of, of how, how they reached out and they were good neighbors and they impacted their neighbor. You know, the one thing that you hear a lot, though, is, is that people, people always say that they, they want to impact the world. They always say, I, I want to make a difference. I want to make an impact. How can I help? And, and I, I just want you to take a moment. I want you to stop right where you are in your living room and, and with the crisis that's going on and, and everything that's going on right now. I want you just to take a moment to, to truly think this through for a moment. Has there ever in your lifetime been a greater moment to go out of your way and make an impact in your neighbor's lives? Have, has there ever been a crisis like this, not even in, in this lifetime, but in multiple lifetimes? There's, there's not been a crisis quite like this where, where so much panic and fear and uncertainty has rose to the surface. And so I, I just want you to think about that this morning, that, that there has not been a greater time in, the, in, in, the, in our lifetimes for the church to rise up and truly be the good neighbors that, that Christ has called us to be. In fact, if you think about that in John 13, 34, he says, love each other as I have loved you. And it's it just as Josh was unpacking, he talked about this, that, that before, the last thing bef that Jesus did before he went to the cross and he gave his life for you and I, he lowered himself down on his knees and he washed our feet. He washed our feet before he gave his life. The greatest crisis that Jesus ever went through was given his life on that cross and he's commanded you and I as the church to give our life to our neighbor, to, to lay our own wants and needs and desires down, our own uh, uh, anxiety and our fear and in in our own uh, panic that might rise up, to lay those things down and, and to reach out and, and be a good neighbor. That doesn't mean you have to be going to the church physically because we are the church. Where you are right now in your living room, you're the church. You're what God is called to be, the hands and feet of his son, Jesus, in this time of crisis. In fact, that, that Christians, we are commanded to love in a greater and a special way. And in this greater opportunity, this crisis, the, 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 it could be the greatest chance for us to show people the love of Christ. And I just have a question for you today. Will you seize this opportunity Will you seize this moment to, to maybe lay your own panic and anxieties in? And I'm not saying to go without, but I'm making, I want you to make sure that your neighbor's not going without. I want you to make sure that you are, are bringing security and comfort to your neighbors. Will you, will you, in fact, can I, can I just maybe make some suggestions? Like, would you make uh, four or five phone calls to people that you've not talked to in a while every day for this 30 days? Will you go out of your way to message people and, and check on your neighbors and, and see if you can get them groceries when you go to the store? Can you do something to go out of your comfort zone to make sure that your neighbors know that you love them, that you care about them? 
Invite them to watch sermons online for, uh, for the next 30 days. And as we're going to have Easter online together. And so you can start planting these seeds for people. And so I just want you to really think about this. That, that you can make those phone calls. Or, or you can uh, take groceries to your neighbor. Or, or maybe you, you're sitting there. You're like, I want to do something. I want to make an impact. Maybe you could start a life group online. In fact, Maybe you just need to join a life group, or maybe you're supposed to lead one. I don't know. The Lord can tell you that, of course. All you have to do is email Ann at wellchurch.life and say, I want to get involved in life groups. And, and this could be a, an incredible moment, an incredible opportunity for you to get involved and make an impact on your neighbor. One more time, who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? You really got to think about that this, this today as we're having service. And I want you to know this. It's anybody that you cross paths with. In fact, in this crisis, in this opportunity, you might have to go out of your way to cross paths with them. But they're, they're right there, and they're waiting for somebody from the church, from God's church, to reach out and show them the love of Christ. In fact, in, in Luke 10, 25 through 37, it talks about the Good Samaritan. And, and really, Jesus sums up this idea in this, where it says that Jesus emphasizes the call to love God is truly the call to love others as well. He emphasizes that you might have to go out of your way to, you can love God, but you've also got to love others if you claim that you love God. In fact, he ends this in verse 37, and this is one of the most impactful statements that I can, I can think about in this moment. He says this, this is what he says. He says, now go and do the same. You know, the same mercy and love that Christ has shown you and I we're charged, and even more than charged, we're commanded to now go and do the same. Right now, this is a moment for the church to rise up. This is a moment for you and I, the body of believers, to begin reaching out and loving our neighbors in a way that, that would draw them into the church. That they would be drawn in and go, I don't know what that is, the kind of love that they're showing me, but I want some of it. And not only more that I want some of it, I want to know more about it. That way I can give others that kind of love. This is our moment. This is what we've been waiting for as a church. This isn't a crisis out of the hands of God. This is a crisis in the hands of God that we can use to glorify his name. If we rise up as the body together, I want to invite you into a time of response right now. I want to invite you in this. I want to ask you, who is my neighbor? Who is your neighbor right there? You're listening this morning, and who is that person that you could make in those phone calls to, that you could be messaging, that you could take groceries to, that will get creative and show different ways to love on people? Who is your neighbor this morning that you could love on? What does it actually look like to love people the way that Christ has loved us? I invite you to respond with us as we go into this time of worship. like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all the love is sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how for you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so
want to thank you again for being here with us today and uh, just remind you that we will continue to be live with you um, here online and so you can continue to share prayer requests uh, you can continue to just share your name and we will know to be able to lift you up by name um, this week through the prayer request i um, also just want to remind you that um, if you there are ways that you can continue to give and reach out here as a body uh, we will still be providing for people in our body. And so um, if you will continue to just give, uh, you can do that online um, at, at thewellchurch.life. And uh, you can also reach out to us um, in any capacity by reaching us through Anne, her email. She is our Connections Discipleship Minister through Anne at thewellchurch.life. And um, continue to leave your comments here with us. I just want to pray one final prayer over you today. Father, we love you. We praise you. Uh, Father, I pray your blessing over all of your people today, over all those that are here with us and that are watching. God, I pray that you will bless them, Father, with peace that passes all understanding. And God, that you will give them wisdom and encouragement, Father, in this season. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And we ask this in Jesus' name.